Welcome to our Black Friday stream. It's become something of a tradition for us to build a PC on Black Friday with the best deals we can find, but we haven't given a ton of thought going into this one to what exactly we're gonna do. I think last year we did like uh, Team AMD, Team Intel builds. I think so. The or thing we is, tried to. this year, depending on what kind of deals we can find, there, it might not really make sense to do that. We might mm. both end up going with the same CPU vendor. Um, so we'll kind of see how that goes. But first, I just want to thank our sponsor for the stream today, iFixit. iFixit's got their Black Friday sale up right now. So you want to head to iFixit.com slash, what's our vanity link? I'm trying to remember what it is. iFixit.com slash Linus. Tons of great tools like the ProTech Toolkit, as well as their magnetic project mat that helps you keep track of all your screws. Please don't knock anything over back there. Thank you, good job. Um, <laughs> just use offer code black and blue 19. So it's all words, no like ampersand, black and blue 19 to the get 19 is free domestic shipping until December 1st. Oh yeah, no, numbers. the 19 is numbers. Yeah, yeah. So black, A-N-D, blue, all caps, one nine. Free shipping, domestic orders, go check it out. So here's what I was kind of thinking. Um, rather than just build kind of arbitrary sort of recommended builds or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, I was kind of thinking it would be cool to do something that's kind of applicable to us personally. So I was trying to stream uh, Beat Saber. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was, about a, it was about a week ago on my HTPC in my living room, because uh, that's where my VR setup is. And I was hitting 100% CPU utilization because I'm running, I forget what the exact model number is. I think it's a Core i5 4430 or something like that. Let me just have a look. Is that is that a processor that exists? Yep, that looks about right. So it's a 4430. So this is a three gigahertz base, 3.2 gigahertz boost quad core with mm. no hyper threading. And I was hitting 100% utilization. Now I can game in VR on it just fine. Um, even in the experimental 144 hertz mode on the index, because most of the games I play are like, let's face it, Beat Saber will run on the uh, Quest. Like, right. it's not exactly the most demanding game in the world, but once I put in this cool uh, Twitch chat overlay that allows me to take my left hand and turn it over to see Twitch chat, that was sucking up 9% CPU, mm -hmm. and then started actually trying to encode the stream, even with the GPU. Oh, really? Yeah. I was at 100% CPU utilization. I was dropping so many frames, it was like making me sick. Due to my mad skills, I was still hitting some pretty good combos because I just like know some of the songs that I was playing really, really well, mm -hmm. but it was, it was ugly. So what I'm gonna configure is a rig that is suitable for playing in VR while also streaming in VR. And to be clear, this is still gonna be a machine that's perfectly good as a, as a two-dimensional gaming machine, but um, really everything that I'm choosing is gonna be VR gaming optimized. What are you up to? Uh, one thing that we've always kind of needed for our apartment is a NAS. Oh, so I think that's probably what I'm gonna go with here. All right. Yeah, probably something with transcode features so I could use Plex. Yeah. Why not? You, you know what? There's actually, I think it's called Exology or something like that. There's a uh, there's a project out there that um, has ported or hacked um, Synology's proprietary software, oh. so you can run it on uh, consumer hardware. We've actually got a video coming up with Synology that shows how you can use their software. Man, there's so many cool apps that they have for it. It's like actually awesome. Uh, you can use their software to just like within what Jake like, if you know what you're doing, like ten minutes maybe. 15? Uh, it takes a bit to like prepare your uh, array. Other than setting up the array, I just mean once you're in the software, how long does it take to set up an offsite synchronization? If you like knew what you were doing, you could probably do it in like three minutes if you were trying. Yeah, like it's really quick. Um, so in terms of software, you've got tons of options, but you're just gonna, are you gonna have a software in mind? Like are you targeting Unraid? Or do you wanna like hack some NAS software, free NAS? What's the purpose of the NAS? Exponology, thanks. I mean, probably what's gonna happen is it's going to also run some basic VMs. What do you want your VMs to do? So basically the NAS, yeah. um, maybe some kind of uh, dev box for, uh, for Erica, and um, I don't know, probably maybe like a game server or two. 
cool. Like nothing, nothing super in, intense, but okay. Uh, so yeah. you're looking for it's like kind of a unique configuration for you then, because you need depending on what kind of game servers you're running, you might yeah. actually need high clock speeds. Uh, possibly, yes. Like, like in uh, Minecraft, yeah. Sort of, for example, that's yeah. what we learned about Minecraft. Was uh, <laughs> you, you need you need them overclocked 9900 Ks, boys. You know. Um, so that's uh, by the way, guys. Did we ever publicly say the Minecraft server would launch on December the first? Yeah, we did. Video, the that's video. not happening. It's coming on yeah, December 2nd. that's not happening. So um, it's coming when it comes, and you won't believe some of the work that uh, Jake and the guys that are helping with it. Like we've already got a bunch of mods and stuff. Jake's been basically full time Minecraft server admin over the last like month. So uh, you know, if you haven't seen him in the videos lately, that would be why. Anyway, let's get uh, let's get on with it. Why don't we start with CPU selections? Okay. So as usual. We're gonna be focusing on Amazon.com and Newegg. We do have affiliate accounts with both of them. So any links that we have under the video, once this is archived, those are gonna be affiliate links. Uh, something to note is that guys, everything we're looking at today is promotional pricing. So the links we're gonna have are just gonna be regular old links to the products that we're showcasing, but we can't guarantee that that pricing will still exist. Um, so shop Black Friday deals, here we go. So Black, oh, right. I should be looking at Black Friday deals. Amazon site is just, shockingly uh, poorly organized sometimes. I can't oh, even wow. find, um, this is interesting. Why would I want missed deals? Why would that be the default? Uh, oh man, and the departments go away. You missed out. So computers and accessories is here, but computer parts is not. Um, so I guess I'll throw computers and accessories in here in the meantime. Let's check out Newegg's Black Friday sale because that seems like it might be a more likely bet for me. Um, deal of the day. What even am I looking at? This is just like random stuff. See details. I swear, man, these guys have an R&D budget that's like, you know, the size of the GDP of a small country. And this is, this is what things look like. I mean, that's not a bad deal on a G903 with power play. I mean, I don't need that for a VR machine and you don't need that for a NAS, but I'm kind of liking it. 64 bucks for that? Uh, yeah, I'm temp tempted. That's pretty sweet. Um, I remember the QCK used to stand alone as like the cloth mouse pad to get, but there's so many options now. I don't I've got I care that much about that. Artisan Sheet and Kai. It's a Japanese mouse pad. Oh yeah? Yeah, the, the one I use at home. It's it's like super slick gliding. So I kind of like that. Wow, there's like almost nothing that I need in here. Um, if I end up going AMD, I'm really gonna care about getting some high frequency memory. So this HyperX Fury kit doesn't really stand out to me. Uh, Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo for 30 bucks. That's $5 off. That's not a huge savings. Um. Yeah, I mean, depending on what your NAS chassis ends up looking like, that might yeah. not fit, though. Might not, though, no. Yeah, you might end up having to go with, like, a 92 millimeter cooler or something like that. Okay, this isn't bad. So here's some Ballistics Tactical Tracer 3200s for $73. I'm going to throw that in as a possible. Uh, description, price, link. Wow. Da, da, da. So that was uh, $73. Uh, what is this? See, and their product listings are so bad. Like, how is the capacity not right at the beginning? Why is RGB listed before capacity on this thing? Performance. Eight gigs times two. All right, all right, it's two by eight gig kit. Uh, 3200 megahertz RGB. All right, that actually looks not bad. Uh, crucial. USB 2.0 VHS to DVD video capture device, what? Why not? That's cool. I guess. Twenty six dollars. Heck yeah! If you got to convert some VHSs, you got to get right on that deal right there. You know what? Why? Why not? You're not putting no. that in your cart. Shut up. <laughs> Are not. <laughs> All right. Hold on a second. So let's. I'm gonna head over to Newegg, where maybe we'll find some actual PC component deals. So ninety seven hundred K is not really what I had in mind for a streaming machine, but given that I intend to play. Um, you know, rhythm games as opposed to really hardcore, like I'm not gonna be streaming Half-Life Alex or whatever. Although, oof, probably wanna be ready for that. Mm. Still, this should handle it. I remember I was talking to Jake about this. 
Do you think a 9700K would handle it okay? Eight core, no hyper threading, 4.9 gigahertz turbo. I think you should stream with NVENC. Well, no, I, I told you this. I was trying to stream with NVENC the other night. It was just that because it was so close to the line already, mm. it just couldn't do it. One thing I've noticed is if you let your GPU frame rate be uncapped, sometimes it will use so much of your GPU that you can't use the NVENC. I wonder if that was part of the problem, actually. It's like in Minecraft, if you try to stream yeah. with NVENC, it will, you'll be at 1500 FPS, but yeah. it will drop frames consistently because it's using all of it. That kind of makes sense. So you cap it to like 200 FPS. So here's something that I'm confused about. Why doesn't this show a before promo price? Isn't that weird? I do think 340 bucks is a pretty good deal for this. So I'm gonna put it in as an option. Uh, I found a Ryzen 7 2700 uh, non-X for 140 bucks. That's 16 threads right there. That's a 2700 though. I mean, that is a significant, remember, this is VR. Right. So for VR, yeah. Well, per thread performance really matters. You need like if you're running the index's experimental 144 hertz mode, yeah. you must not drop below 144 frames per second because you're either going to have your headset throwing in compensation frames or you're going to get nauseated because you're going to actually drop frames. So right. for me, if I can find a good deal on a third gen Ryzen, I'm going Ryzen. Yeah. but I'm not gonna take a deal on a second gen Ryzen. 140 bucks is a good price for that. That might work for something like what you're doing, but right. I don't think it makes sense for me. I think for my NAS, that would actually be excellent. Core i7, 9700K. I'll just throw that in real quick. Why is that blurry? 240 bucks. Why is this whole thing blurry? What is going on? What's blurry? Literally everything. Oh, well maybe, you know, your fancy, uh, your fancy, Spreadsheet that you made isn't as good as my fancy spreadsheet. <laughs> I can share mine with you if you'd like. No, that, that's I'm good. Thank it's you. helpfully all nicely formatted and everything. Uh, should I make? Oop! Should I make my text a little bit bigger, Jake? Be a little uh, more readable. I'm looking at Anthony's switched screen. No, you look fine. I look fine. Okay. You should maybe try Micro Center if you can't find anything on the other side. Uh, yeah, I can fire up Micro Center. I I haven't made it that far on uh, Newegg's site though. I mean, I already that looked like a pretty good deal to be. Hold on a second, 5,700 XTs are 450 bucks. When did graphics cards get so expensive? Like, honestly, I, okay, it's a rhetorical question because we all know that it started with the 10 series and then really ratcheted up a couple notches with RTX. Um, but like, when did it become okay for a mid-tier graphics card to cost $450? You can get those for 330 right now, I'm pretty sure. I think I'm aging myself a little bit here, but I remember buying, what was it? It would have been a 6800 GT. No, okay. oh no, hold on, hold on. Was it a 70? No, it would have been a 6800 GT. It was from Chain Tech, And that thing oh, was like $450. Yeah. And that was a one step below top tier. Like that was the equivalent of something like an RTX 2070 today. No, 2080, really, more like it, because it was based on the... It's not even the equivalent, because it was based on the same GPU. It just had a couple functional units disabled, and it was downclocked a little bit, but you could overclock it. Like, it was very close to top-tier performance. That would have been 2006, 2007? Okay, how is Intel getting so aggressive on their 660 series... NVMe SSDs, like $83 for a terabyte of NVMe storage. It's not the fastest NVMe storage. Yeah, it's QLC. But it's like for a gaming rig where realistically, how often do you re-download your whole Steam library? <laughs> yeah. Why not? Um, and if you end up going with, uh, I know you've got a Intel processor in there right now. Yeah. Um, the shield that you are. We'll but, see if that lasts. So. Um, there's a uh, kit of 3600 G-Skill memory, uh, two by eight. Yeah. For 70 bucks on Newegg right now. 70 bucks? 3600, uh, CAS 16. Is, is $3 that much more to pay for RGB? Hold on, let me let me check. Uh, this is CAS 16 as well. That's 3200. But it's only 3200. I but mean, for RGB. Intel, it doesn't really matter it's as RGB. much. It's, it's RGB. It is RGB. <clears throat> I know it does still matter a little bit, and especially if I'm gonna run out and grab a 9700K so that I can optimize my single-threaded performance, I might as well optimize my single threaded performance. So I'll keep With an eye RGB. out for that. But 
I don't know. It depends on what the aesthetics of the rest of my machine end up looking like. Right. Um, it also really depends on what motherboards I can find because for my HTPC, I need something small that'll fit inside my console. I don't want like a big ATX tower sitting next to it there. I don't necessarily need that for the Ryzen 7, but uh, that's a good price for, you know, 860 gigs of, uh, 16 gigs of 3600. So I'll put that in there for now. We'll see how. Holy crap. You know what? I'm throwing this in. LG is on fire with their OLED deals for Black Friday this year. Have you seen some of the stuff they're doing? No. This isn't even one of the craziest ones. The B series is getting hit really hard as well. Um, I haven't actually uh, seen those deals yet. We should, I can check it out over here. Department Electronics. Uh, oh, oh, that this is filtering down farther, really? Okay, whatever. Okay, Amazon. <laughs> are so just here. Television and video is not electronics, apparently. Who cares? I just I can't even fathom it. Uh, Control F LG. Here we go. Let's have a look at some of the stuff they're doing. Shop all deals. Wait, is this? I, I don't even understand. No, this is just the entire site now. This isn't even Black Friday deals. Just stop. Really? This? Is Amazon's OLED deal? That is not even close. And that's that's the same C9 as on Newegg here for $36.99. Is this not CA or something? No. Nope. Wow. Okay. Well, you might not think of Newegg when you're shopping for a TV, but a 77-inch... Remember, guys, LG's OLED lineup naming scheme makes no sense, okay? <laughs> the B series is the lower one, and the C series is the premium one. Why? I couldn't tell you. So the difference between them in terms of image quality is actually very slight. The C series gets a little bit brighter and it does technically have a better processor in it, but LG reversed their previous position and ended up adding G-Sync compatibility to both the C and the B. So the B one is the like killer value one, but this deal is crazy. And since we're talking HTPC, uh, this would be a great upgrade for the BFGD that I have right now. And it's $1,300 less. LG 77 inch C9 OLED, uh, $3699. I mean, obviously you don't need to buy a new TV just because you're like hooking an HTPC up to it or whatever, but what the hey, what the hey, it's an option. Uh, $170 for an X570 board. I mean, if you're running it like a NAS or something, you could just get a B-series board, right? Yeah, there's no point. Unless I wanted to like hang a bunch of PCI Express 4.0 storage off of it, and yeah. then, then I'd need a 3-series uh, Zen 2 processor. All right. So it's not a big deal. Um, I was looking actually at a uh, MSI Gaming B450M Gaming Plus uh, motherboard, which is... Yeah, 20 oh, bucks off. That's MATX. That's MATX. If I find a good AMD processor deal, I could pick that up too, actually. Yeah, it's actually, uh, from what I remember of the motherboard tier list, it's one of the better ones with uh, with regard to the VRMs and stuff. So it should be good for the 2700. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a tough choice. So do I go with the Ryzen 7 3800X at $10 cheaper than the 9700K, do I go with the 9700K for 340 bucks, or do I drop down to a 9600K? Oh, that's only a six core. No, I wanna stick with eight core. I'm gonna stick with eight core. So 3800X for 330, or 9700K for 340. They're both eight core, but Intel lacks hyperthreading at that price point and my Ryzen processor doesn't boost as high. So it's 4.5 gigahertz boost, albeit with a slight IPC advantage and SMT. So that means I get 16 threads. I kind of talked myself into the AMD processor, didn't I? It comes with the Outer Worlds. I actually want to play that game. I heard it's really good. Oh, well that's like, how much is that game new? I don't know. 60 bucks. It's, 60 it's a $60 bucks? game. Yeah, so that's $60 off the cost of your CPU right there. You know what's funny is, uh, I don't know if I've ever had a game bundle be the ultimate deciding factor for me for a product. Usually to me, they were just like something that I could flip on Craigslist yeah. for like a couple bucks. Or just like Borderlands too. Yeah, but who cares about Borderlands? You can sell it though. That's Diablo. 
It's first person shooter Diablo. No, I don't want to talk about Borderlands. No one deserves to have Borderlands thrust upon them. Wow, you're gonna have a lot of people mad at you. I know, <laughs> especially Jake. Guys, I am 40% just trying to trigger Jake. The other 60% is me actually believing that. And, and, guys, I played all the way through the Borderlands 1 campaign. Legitimately. Two was the same game. So essentially, I played them both. Because <laughs> they were not different. It was like, yeah, we're gonna go find the treasure again. Like, you gotta be kidding me. Ooh, apparently with like the Game Pass thing, you can play the other worlds for like five dollars. Oh, with what Game Pass thing though? Because I, I don't know. Because I don't subscribe to Game Passes. But I think there's a free like, trial too. Like yeah. Like a one dollar, one month trial. Yeah, no, 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 I, I buy my games. Like, no, 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 no. I, I like to like actually like, I know you don't own anything in this all digital world, but I still like to at least feel like I own my games. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm doing it. I'm going AMD unless the motherboard kind of screws me over here. In terms of graphics card, uh, RTX 2070 Super, this MSI, uh, wow, this MSI one looks like a great deal and includes Call of Duty Modern Warfare, which Luke's been playing a lot lately. And I was like, oh yeah, I want to play with you guys. And then I found out it was like, what is it, like 80 Canadian dollars or something stupid like that? And I was like, uh, no. If you sell your Borderlands, you can buy it. If I sell my Borderlands, I don't even have to because I'm just gonna get an RTX 2070, smart guy. <laughs> How do you like them apples, Jake? Uh, 2070, super. The promo code was wrong. The promo code was wrong? You read it backwards. Did I now? Yes. Uh, oh, blue and black, right? Yep, whoops, my bad. So guys, sorry, correction on the iFixit promo code. It is blue and black Friday 19. No, blue and black 19. Blue and black 19? Yes. Oh, it's bloody hell. No, no Friday. Blue and black 19, whatever. The point is, go use the promo code. <laughs> Get iFixit stuff. Free shipping, free domestic shipping. All right, cool. <laughs> so 500 bucks for my RTX 2070 Super. Haven't seen a better deal than that so far. Okay. If you need an SD card, I guess you could like buy an SD card or whatever. 2080 Ti, there was actually a much better deal than that one on, I think it was a Gigabyte 2080 Ti up here, but I don't think I need to go that hard. Oh no, it was an EVGA. Uh, I don't think, oh, this one looks so cool. This is their Black Edition. We actually use this for an upcoming build. I don't know why they call it Black Edition because it's clear. Look at it. Oh, This yes. thing is sick. I don't need to spend $1,100 to play Beat Saber, so I'm not putting it in my list, but like, it looks so cool. Can we have more clear electronics, please? I know, right? I want that to come back so hard. I know. So need to go back to the N64 days. Yeah, Hardcore. Like frosted plastic, like like black frosted plastic or something, oh. where it's just like semi-transparent. That's like the good Game stuff, Game Boy man. Color, the transparent ones. Mm. Holy crap. Why are there 95 pages of deals? I don't know. I mean, on the one hand, I don't think that, you know, Newegg really wowed me with their one page of deals, but on the other hand, I don't really want to scroll through 95 pages of deals. I'm All right, I'm narrow. over the RGB for my build. I'm, I'm just gonna narrow it down to what component I'm looking for here. Sure. Uh, I'm saving my $3 and I'm getting the G-Skill um, 3600 kit, especially because I'm going Ryzen now. Yeah, that's a good idea. 600 and... Good deal too. Yeah, it's a pretty good deal. Oh, do I want to go 2080 Super for another 230 bucks? Not really, actually. You don't really need to. I don't really need to. No, okay. I'm going to try and make this an actually sensible build instead of just, like, something super, like, sweet. Um, hmm, I don't need a huge power supply, but I need something that's going to be able to scale a little bit. Wow, this is not bad. 170 bucks after $20 rebate on an MSI RX 580. Uh, I do want something a little bit beefier. Um... For streaming, but ooh, okay. Would you go with the 2070 for 470, or the 2070 Super for another 30 bucks? Oh, apparently 500 bucks is MSRP for a 2070 Super. Is it? That's what people in chat are saying. I get Modern Warfare though. Do you want Modern Warfare? <laughs> the marketing's working. <laughs> I know, right? I mean, sometimes. Websites do this sometimes. They'll say it was a certain price, but that mm. price never existed. I don't think they showed a discount on it necessarily. But I haven't seen anything more compelling yet, so either the Black Friday deals just suck, or, uh, which is entirely possible. Yeah, on NVIDIA's website, 2070 Super, 499 MSRP. 
Well, there you go. So do I save 30 bucks and go with the 2070? I wouldn't think so. I, I would think I would just go for the Super. Everybody's setting 5700 XT. I'm not going with the 5700 XT. I want that new NVENC encode. Oh, yeah. Like, no way. That is a thing. We're gonna, remember guys, this is a streaming machine. We're building a machine for a purpose, not just building a machine to appease um, people who really love AMD graphics cards for whatever reason. Like, this is a streaming machine. For that matter, if you really did want to get a 5700 class CPU or G GPU, you would want to go with the 5700 non-XT and try to flash the BIOS to the XT BIOS. You'd get most of the performance of the XT out of it that way. Just remember guys, don't be a fanboy. Buy the right hardware for what you're trying to do. Um, all right, so what is... <sighs> Unfortunately, I'm not super familiar with all of the sort of value boards. So I'm gonna have a look at this uh, B450 DS3H from Gigabyte here. It's MATX, it's, which mm, might be small enough for me. I don't think is, the DS3H is a good board. Um, if you want a good cheat list, like a cheat sheet, there's basic. a motherboard tier list on our forums. Oh yeah. Yeah, it includes uh, AM4, TR4, and um, Intel as well. Motherboard tier list. X570 update. All right, let's go check it out. Because the thing, too, is I don't need to go tier A, you know, 200 amps of current draw. Right. Like, I'm not going to be overclocking this thing. I'm no. just putting a 3800X on it. But, yeah, that's so, the thing is the 3800X is a relatively high draw CPU. It's 105 watt TDP, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, but it's not like... Okay, I mean, even tier D is going to handle 100 amps with little ambient airflow. So, like... <laughs> All right, anyway, I'm going to have a look at um, which tier this one falls into at any rate. DS3H. Oof, it's tier E. All right. Mm. I mean, it didn't look amazing, but I had sort of hoped it would not be literally the worst. I mean, then again, it is 60 bucks. I mean, what do I expect? Uh, what can I do for you, Nick? Well, while you're talking about deals, you want to talk about more deals? Uh, yeah, we might as well, we might, okay, lttstore.com, guys, are the deals live? Yeah? Yes. Okay, so lttstore.com, guys, uh, buy two underwear three packs, get the third one free, so that they have to add all three to their cart, and it'll automatically apply, um, that's gonna be our Black Friday deal, and we are concurrently running free shipping up to 30 US dollars on the store, so, uh, Please load up your carts, guys. <laughs> Please buy some high margin items, because otherwise we're going to be eating it on this one. What's the code for that one? It's BF SHIP, all caps. BF SHIP, all caps. And that's on orders of $100 or more. Orders of $100 or more. So guys, BF SHIP, all caps, orders of $100 US dollars or more, and that's free shipping up to $30. I apologize in advance. There was no way for us to have a $30 credit apply if you happen to live in like Timbuktu and your shipping is more than $30, it can't just be like, you know, on a $32 shipping order, it's $2. There was no way for us to do that. So my sincere apologies. Um, there's, ju there's just no way with the, with the mechanisms that we have available to us right now. Sorry. Um, but as long as your shipping costs are under $30, you should have a free shipping option. Yeah, um, and like- What else we got? Under a week shipping to Europe through FedEx is usually under $30. Okay. Um, and then important note, you can only have one of those two applied to your cart. Okay. So there's just no way for us to have our store have two discount codes on one cart at this time. So you can only choose one of the two, either free shipping on $100 or more. Oh, really? $30. Oh, more. I didn't know that. Okay. Uh, I told you that earlier. I forgot. I'm sorry. <laughs> so it's one or the other. Yes. Sorry, guys. We did our best. Um, so either way, hopefully you uh, enjoy that. And we're revamping the site soon, so hopefully we can fix that soon. <laughs> yep. Okay, bye. Thanks, Nick. Okay, so I found an ASRock X570 MATX board, but I really don't want to spend $170 on a motherboard for this. Yeah, you don't need it for, for sure. Like, you're not going to use PCI Express 4.0 for any of the no, things. No, I know. Play. I don't need it at all. So yeah, it looks like realistically, the promo is the free Modern Warfare. So that, that's it. Because I'm looking at all the other NVIDIA cards here and it's like, eh. Ooh, 
Ooh. How is the fatality branding still a thing? Anyway, that doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I remember fatal fatality x -Fies. Fatality. Okay, here we go. Uh, no, where's the... Dang it. Is the fatality board not in the Ryzen stuff? Shoot. That kind of bites. You know what? I might just go for it anyway. It can't be that bad. You know, it's fatality, right? Jonathan Wendell wouldn't put his name on anything that's bad. No, of course not. Hold on, let me just, I just want to have a look at it. Ooh, it's only got three eggs. Come on. Oh, that does not look amazing. No VRM cooling to speak of. Yeah, I know. But it's it's ITX. Okay, you know what? I'm, I'm digging in. I'm digging in here. Oh boy. All right. What are some of these one egg? Some of these one egg ratings here. Let's have a look here. Killed my RAM twice. Okay. Uh, just to confirm, uh, tested RAM, second computer, still won't boot, blah, blah, blah. Okay. In the brief time it was working, it ran great. Okay, DOA. I, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna fault a board for being DOA necessarily because it only matters, you know. Oh, wow. But this one died within, okay. It doesn't work with Zen 2. Yeah, it, it'll work. You just gotta have flash your BIOS. Um, don't buy for Ryzen 3rd gen. Hmm. BIOS update breaks the system. Okay, yeah, come on, guys. Not sure. Okay, so it looks like people were having issues with Ryzen 3rd gen with it. But how old are these reviews? Like, this is from July. Uh, this is from July. This is from June. This is from May. This is from April. Okay. So these are super old reviews. Let's have a look at some of the newer ones. So in the last two weeks, what do we got? All five stars. Where, where'd they go? There are no, oh, okay. Um, they were scared off. What else can we do? Oh, no, okay, it's because I had two filters. So last two weeks, excellent value, upgrade the Wi-Fi module before installation. Mine was Ryzen third gen ready as advertised. So it looks like some of the bad reviews uh, or most of the bad reviews are from a long time ago. You know what? I'm going for it. Everybody's saying the B450 Tomahawk Max. B450 Tomahawk Max. Well, we can check the pricing. Sure. I'm going to I'm going to hold on to this one for now just because I like this option better than what I already had. Uh oh, what? Really? I'm not seeing a lot of really good NAS cases. At least not on sale. Yeah, I mean that's the problem when you try to build something very like specialized. I mean, I can just get a case that's a desktop case with a bunch of bays in it and be fine. Are but you even going to be able to find that these days, though? Define that's hmm. Yeah, I guess the Define is not a bad option. Uh, sorry, which one's the one that people said I should check out? Tomahawk Max B450. Uh, Carbide 275R is actually Tomahawk a decent Max. deal, I think. That's an ATX board, you guys. Oh, are you being not here? Yeah, no, I'm, it's, this is an HTPC. Yeah, I mean, thank you for the recommendation, but uh, that's why I was so excited when I found, you know, uh, $90 after $20 rebate on a, uh, a B450 board. Uh, so actually, yeah, this is sort of 90, 20 MIR. Uh, insert. Let's do those in a different column. I'm gonna be a good spreadsheet maker here. All right, 60 bucks for an H60. I just wouldn't even do it. Like, why? Why bother? Just put air cooling on it. What else we got here? SSDs are so friggin' cheap now. Yeah, it's ridiculous. $42 for a team group, 480 gig. And that's probably not even like an amazing deal either. Like I'm sticking with my NVMe one terabyte for 60 bucks. I mean, this probably isn't QLC, so depending on what you're doing, it might make more sense to go for something other than what I did. But if it's just a game drive, it's fine. Is MATX fine? MATX might be okay, but that's honestly maybe not going to fit depending on the case I find. ITX gives me a lot more options. Because apparently there's a really good MSI board that's MATX. I would prefer ITX hardcore. Um, here's a gigabyte. Oh, that's MATX. That's only 70 bucks. Uh, okay, the Hyper 212 Black Edition is only $35. I'm going to throw it in there. What have you got going on, Anthony? You haven't really given us an update lately. 
Yeah, I'm still looking for cases. I think I'm gonna go with the Fantex Eclipse P400. It's uh, not a huge deal, it's only $10 off, but uh, it's got six internal 3.5 inch drive bays, as well as, looks like two, two and a half inch bays, which should give me plenty of storage options for the future. Is there a way that I can filter by like Black Friday deals? Like maybe I just need to start, because it looks like Newegg has just dumped their entire catalog into their stupid Black Friday, the ultimate sale thing Yeah, the here. filters on the side and on the top also, like they all work. So if you go to compute like components oh, and stuff, crying yeah. Crying out loud. They did dump everything in, but you can filter it. Nerds. All right, cases, let's, uh, okay. I should go on to storage. Computer cases, wait. They don't have like they don't have all the filters though. So I just have manufacturer price availability and ratings. You're looking at coolers? Uh no, I thought I clicked on cases. Oh, okay. Must have misclicked. Alright, let's see what we got for mini ITX then. Core V1 Extreme. Um, that could be an option for me. If I want to go super classy though, I could go Lee and Lee Q37 WX with that sexy tempered glass window. I gotta say the temptation would be there, even though I would ultimately be burying it in a little cubby. Um, hey, the Ragin Tech Métis, we really liked that when we did our uh, MITx roundup, didn't we? It was okay. Um, I didn't like building it's, in it. It's fifty-three dollars, and my hands are a lot smaller than yours, so yeah, might be all right. And I have my choice of color options, none of which are black. Really? <laughs> the opposite of Ford. Oh man, so I got silver other more different silver, blue and red. So if I want something black, it's basically thermal take or $140. I mean, what do you think? At, uh, by the time I'm spending $330 on a CPU and like 500 bucks on a graphics card, can I justify a $140 case? What's the difference between the cases? Does, does the thermal take include any kind of cooling? Mm, no, I think they're both just cases. Well then, yeah, I don't see the, I don't see the point. Oh no, this one's super compact. I had this one confused with another one. I really don't think this is gonna fit my 2070 Super. Okay. Mm, oh, no, I could be mistaken. Okay, I'm gonna have to double check it though. So we're gonna have to check our GPU length, uh, length spec here. Max GPU length allowance, 255 mil. Go away! I don't wanna see that. Uh, all right, then let's go ahead and uh, check this one as well. I hate the way they do specifications for a graphics card. I'll be floored if it actually has the length of the bloody thing in here. Does it? What Probably do you mean? Not. What does max GPU length mean? How long is it? Is it that long? What? Uh, max GPU outer chest. <coughs> you know what? I think it's too long. I don't think I can use the thermal take. I, I think this actually, I think this actually is it. Now what we could do is we could go find a different graphics card, but so far this was the best RTX 2070 Super deal that we found with the uh, $30 rebate card, which I actually didn't even have in my, uh, in my deal thing yet. See, it is a deal. Whatever, it's $30 off if you're willing to fill out some annoying paperwork, which I would have my wife do because she is the paperwork master. She hates it when I make her do my paperwork. I'm sure she does. Yeah. Uh... But she knows I'm gonna do it wrong. So it's like, <laughs> what choice does she have? It's, uh, that's a thing. Uh, Whoops. How you doing? Uh, looking at storage options, I think I'm gonna go with a small OS drive. And then I'm gonna go with um, probably an acceleration style, like a caching SSD. Mm -hmm. And then I guess two drives to start out with. Okay, how properly are you doing this though? Like are you, build, are you specking in redundancy right from the start? I'm gonna spec in redundancy. Uh, I'm probably gonna grab like two eight terabyte drives, assuming there's something here, mm -hmm. um, and run them in RAID one. RAID one. That's not okay. You gotta. What OS are you running again? I haven't decided that yet. Okay, you should decide on your OS, cause like if you're running on RAID, then you could pick up a single caching drive. Yeah. And like two drives for your array. Mm -hmm. And then what's kind of cool about Unraid is what it does is when you're only running two drives in an array, it actually does run them in RAID 1, if I recall correctly. Right. And then once you add another drive, then it starts using a more conventional Unraid parity plus drives. 
And the other thing that's cool is that if you're the kind of person who's gonna start with just two drives and then expand over time, OnRaid allows you to buy one like max capacity drive and then whatever is the best like dollars per terabyte and then you can just keep doing that and you can mix and match everything. Now, I, I know I you know, heart unraid so very much, et cetera, et cetera, but there's, mm -hmm. there's very few other options that let you expand like that. And you can also buy one caching drive now and then chuck another one in later and raid them after the fact. Right. Um, whereas if you're running something like FreeNAS, you're gonna get way better performance than unraid, like yeah. off, of your, off of your hard drive array. But the problem is that you've gotta buy full VDEVs worth of hard drives at a time and you have to expand with like full VDEV sets of drives every time you do it. So if you wanna run something like RAID Z2, which is two parity drives and then the rest gives you your capacity, uh, you, know, you gotta buy like five, six, seven drives at a time, um, which is not always feasible, especially for home users. So yeah. I think you need to decide on your OS before you finalize your I storage. think it'll probably be unraid in that case, um, just because of the uh, virtual machine use cases as well. Right. Um, or something like it. Now, to be clear, Unraid is not, by any stretch of the imagination, the only way to run Linux VMs for yeah. what Anthony's talking about. Yeah, uh, I could use LVM groups as well. You could use... I can do it all manually. You use Proxmox. You yeah. could just run, like, Ubuntu. Just, like... There's a ton of ways to do it. Um, and there's a lot of ways to do it that are free, uh, which Unraid is not. Unraid is paid software. Um, it's just a tidy little package, and a lot of people like the expandability of it. Um, and I think it's very applicable when you're talking about like, oh, I'm gonna buy like two drives today and then I'm like gonna see how it goes on Boxing Day and then like next year. Right. Because who was it, Seagate was saying they wanted to ship 20 terabyte drives next year, something stupid like that? I think that was Seagate, yeah. Yeah, we'll see if they do it. I mean, how long have they been talking about Hammer? Hmm, it's been many years. <laughs> long time. So... Yeah, so more rows for storage. I'm... That motherboard on Micro Center, 95 bucks, but does it have the MIR? I'm gonna have to check. All right, all right. I'm a uh, uh, fatality. Oh man, it's, you gotta type the stupid one. <laughs> B450. Yeah, fatality. Center. I know, right? I met Jonathan Wendell. Yeah? He was doing like um, like a just like exhibition match at Computex, I think, one year. Me? Um, yeah, this one, it's 119. This looks like it is $10 more expensive. Maybe they had it confused for a different one, but this is the same SKU. It's 99 after rebate instead of uh, 90 after rebate. So I will be sticking with the, um, the new egg deal on that one for now. I've decided on the Lee and Lee case. It looks so sexy. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just doing it. I think I need to get a couple fans. Cooling fans. Um, just cause I'm gonna have, like it's a glass front Glass side, there's not a ton of ventilation. Sup? Request Newegg's price. Yeah. Because this item is priced lower than the suggested manufacturer's okay, advertised okay. price. I will, I, let, me, let me fill you guys in on that. So it's super stupid from a consumer standpoint to have to jump through hoops in order to get a freaking price for an <laughs> item. But what happens is a lot of the time manufacturers have what's called a MAP, minimum advertised price. And what that is to prevent is the computer industry doing what it does best and racing to zero, trashing the price of products to make their competitors look bad and to um, you know, ultimately act as a loss leader so that they can sell other stuff at margin. Now you as a consumer might say, well, what's the problem with that? That sounds great. The problem with it for a manufacturer is that once a price point for a product has been established, it's very hard to raise it back up. So it tends to really hurt your sales after the fact uh, while people wait around for it to hit that price again. Um, so I can understand why manufacturers have minimum advertised prices, but um, yeah, it means that retailers, if they wanna go below it, have come up with this uh, clever workaround. I mean, you should be grateful that retailers are creating mechanisms for this because otherwise they just couldn't go below that price. Riddle me this then. Yes. What's with C-pricing cart. C-pricing cart is when you are at less risk of losing your MDF, which is your marketing development funds from the vendor, um, by going okay. below map. I see. 
So Crucial is a little bit more anal about that than Western Digital is apparently. That is the assumption that I'm making for why they would have two separate mechanisms for that, for this particular deal. Um, Cause you gotta remember guys, a lot of the time it's more comp, when you're negotiating a deal, uh, particularly for a big promo, like Black Friday in the US, Boxing Day in the States or whatever else, there's a lot of different elements to it. There's how many units can I get? There's how many am I allowed to sell per customer? Because you don't want a bunch of other resellers running out and buying them and then marking them back up. Like you're not, as a retailer, it's not your job to fund some mom and pop shop's margin on reselling that item two weeks later, right? Like that's stupid. So how many you can sell at a time? Um, what kind of additional discounts or kickbacks you can get? Uh, how you're allowed to promote it? So, you know, they might say, okay, look, we can get you 2,000 units out of the 5,000 units allocation that we have for North America, but you need to make sure it's in your newsletter so that we're getting exposure because uh, you're getting the lion's share of the allocation or whatever the case may be. So there's so much more to it than just, you know, a manufacturer is an endless supply of the product and it just like has a price and you just place an order. There's actually negotiations that take place for every deal you see here. I'm gonna need a new, new motherboard because it doesn't have enough RAM slots for one that I didn't realize. Oh, bummer. And it uh, doesn't have enough M.2 slots either. Oh, bummer. So you're gonna have to spend more on your MOBA. Oh, I didn't even check if my ASRock board here has enough, uh, that should have at least one M.2 slot, right? You know what, I'm, assume, I'm gonna assume it has an M.2 slot. I'm not worried about it. Mm. So my case though, um, I held off on my power supply for now because I wasn't sure what kind of case I would need. It looks like I need an SFX power supply. And this is where you tend to start to run into trouble a little bit. I've seen a few on the site. Yeah, but I am I will be surprised if there's like deals to be had on specialty items like SFX power supplies. I'm gonna have a look though. Uh, two, there are apparently two Black Friday deals on SFX power supplies. $100 for a 450 watt, are you kidding me? Although I would go Corsair over this FSP unit. Um, what Most, series is that FSP, uh, FSP unit? Um, this is, it's 80 plus gold. Hold on a second, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do, so here you guys, I mean, this is what I do anytime I find a product that I don't recognize. Um, just look it up. What information can we find about this? Uh, it's 80 plus bronze. So that doesn't really tell us anything other than that it's not particularly special as far as um, the mm. efficiency goes by modern standards. Uh, I mean, it's FSP, so it probably won't blow up. Yeah, it's probably but... fine. It does have all black ribbon cables. That only tells us that it's like a slightly more premium model, rifle bearing fan which is basically just a fancy sleeve bearing fan. Um, okay, let's see if we can find any information that isn't FSP's website. Not a single review. Very few outlets do like power supply reviews for just rando power supplies these days. I mean, all we can really do at that point is check, uh, check customer reviews really. And it looks like on Amazon anyway, they haven't sold a lot of these. Dang it. Honestly, I didn't really want a 450 watt power supply anyway. I mean, RTX 2070 Super and a 3800X, like mm, it's probably fine, but that's not a lot of breathing room. I would have much rather had a 500 or a 600 watt power supply. The Corsair is probably okay. I mean, it's, it's probably gonna be okay, yeah. But it's more expensive. And I'm not overclocking, so there's that. Is Outer Vision's PSU calculator still all right? Uh, haven't tried it in a while. Oh, it's apparently up to date at the very least. All right, cool. Hey, it even lets you dial in vCore. That's pretty sick. Oh, wow. All right, cool. You know what, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do it. Here we go, eight gig DDR4 modules. Yeah, there we go. Uh, NVIDIA 2070 Super. Look at that. Would you look at that? Very nice. Storage, we got one M.2 SSD. Love it. 
keyboard and mouse. Yeah, we got a keyboard, we got a mouse. Other devices, I'm not using, excuse me, I'm not using an Oculus, so I don't have like cameras hooked up or anything like that, like an older Rift or anything. So I don't have to worry about the power draw of that. But let's say that I'm gonna have, uh, you know, a couple USB 3 devices, a couple USB 2 devices, cause I have like an IR receiver for my home theater remote and stuff like that. So I just wanna make sure I'm accounting for that. I also have, uh, I'm gonna have a total of six fans, um, 120 mil, because I'm gonna have two that I wanna install in the case, and then I have four that are actually wired into my cabinet so that I get airflow through it with the front door closed. Ooh, make that seven, need one for the CPU. Utilization time, yeah, who cares, whatever. Uh, gaming, I don't know, two hours a day, whatever. Calculate. Load wattage. 442, and as I anticipated, recommended PSU wattage is 500 watts. <sighs> okay, looks like I don't get to take advantage of that deal. So maybe what I'm gonna do is head over to Amazon and see what they've got in terms of XFX, XFX, SFX power supply. I mean, do XFX still makes power supplies, right? Yeah, I think they do. Yeah. Okay. Here's an EVG, oh, that doesn't look like an SFX, does it? Is that an SFX L? Or is that, no, that's just a compact ATX, I think. No, it's just a 550B3. What even, what even is the point of putting in a search term, Amazon? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I could just get this. We can find out how much it costs yeah, over on Newegg, though. So All right, what do we got? Okay, well, the 600 watt Corsair is cheaper on Amazon. Is this the platinum? No, that's the gold. Okay, nope. Supernova SFX 94. There's that same focus unit. Oh, yep, the gold one is also cheaper on Newegg. Wow, Amazon, you gotta step up your game. You gotta step up your game. Where's all the Silverstone kind of options? In. 50 watt, Silverstone, 300 watt. Oh, I didn't know Seasonic did SFX. Yeah, I think that's something they've been doing relatively recently, the past couple of years. Here's a Seasonic 500 watt, uh, 80 plus gold, 100 bucks, probably fine. FSP 650 watt for 110. That one's actually on promo, even though I didn't see it. Dagger Pro. VR and 4K ready gaming power supply. Ooh. Well, how could I resist? Uh, the dagger actually is a pretty good power supply from what I understand. That seems like one of my better options so far, actually. You know what, I'm gonna go for it. Okay, I think we found something. I would have, mm, I would have really had an SFX, I would have really rather had an SFX L if I could get away with it, because then I can use a 120 mil fan but I'm also not 100% sure if this case supports SFXL. You know, I think this is a fun way to, uh, I think this is a fun way to do these streams because in the past we've kind of just like, been like, yeah, here's a gaming rig. Yeah. But this is making me do a lot more of the research that I would normally do if I was actually purchasing something for myself. Yeah, I think it's actually pretty, um, pretty educational for people who, you know, don't, know how to do these kinds of things. The modern mini ITX enclosure. And we're getting hit by the traps that many people get hit by, like, oh, not enough RAM slots, not enough. Okay, Lee and Lee is the king of this. Using mm -hmm. the most ancient hardware in their product photos. Is that, is that a Maxdor? That is a Maxdor hard drive. <laughs> what are you guys doing? They haven't been around for over 10 years. So like, I remember talking about this when I did my like unboxing or review, I don't remember if it was an unboxing or review, but of the Antec DF85, which was one of the worst cases to ever exist. And what was so bad about it was that there were just obvious design flaws that made it basically impossible to build a computer in it neatly. Like, like modern hardware that existed already during the development process of this product just basically didn't fit in it. And 
what I what I said at the time was I was like, it is shocking how many products make it to market with nobody having bothered to ever actually put it together, you know? And this is a classic example of that because you can tell if Lee and Lee had bothered to put modern hardware in it, they might have noticed things that they otherwise wouldn't. Like, in fairness to them, that's at least a SATA power supply. All right, power supply. That's at least a SATA hard drive. Yeah. But what happened a lot back then was manufacturers, like Lee and Lee, would be using IDE drives because mm -hmm. that's what they had lying around. And then you'd go to install a SATA one and the, the higher profile SATA connector, it would be almost impossible to route. And the, the, guys, just put modern stuff in your... <laughs> I mean, one cool thing about this case that I didn't realize is that it actually has enough clearance in the top for a thick water cooling radiator, so that's neat. Hmm. Doesn't look like they've given a ton of thought to where you would actually put a, a reservoir or a pump, which is another issue with manufacturers being like, ooh, we're water cooling ready. Look, we put a radiator in. No, you have to actually build it with a loop. I mean, that is what Corsair came along and revolutionized. Hmm. As crazy as that sounds, when I started getting my hands on Corsair cases for the first time, I was like, huh, they really thought about this. They, they built actually the computer in it. They went, they got a bunch of motherboards and a bunch of power supplies, and they put them in here and made sure that they actually fit. Like when Antec launched the, uh, the P180, Mm -hmm. uh, they, it was notorious for even Antec's own power supplies not having long enough four pin connectors to reach the top of the motherboard. I remember that. I remember that too. And it's like, <laughs> guys, you gotta think about this stuff. Where are the cables gonna go? Uh, NZXT is really good about that as well. Uh, probably in no small part due to their very close relationship that they don't like talking about with iBuyPower. Um, Cause iBuyPower is a system builder, NZXT makes cases for you know, the system builder to have really good pricing on. Um, Fantex 2 actually is really good about it. Um, so let me have a look here. Three and a half inch bay. Um, do they mention SFXL? If anyone is, uh, if anyone watching knows, it would be great to know. It does look visually like it'll fit. Uh, so here's the power supply bay, I think. Yeah. And it doesn't look like there's anything that would interfere. And in fact, that side panel has a, what looks like a 120 millimeter sized um, perforation on it. So I'm pretty sure this is going to fit in SFXL. Uh, but for whatever reason, probably because they just haven't tested it, uh, Lee and Lee doesn't, doesn't advertise it. PCQ37 SFX. Remember guys, never be afraid to Google something. SFXL. Yep, Guru3D says fits SFXL up to 220 millimeters long. Nice. So I'm just going to check in on that. Um, what was the one that I decided on? The FSP. The Dagger Pro. Yeah. So I'm just going to check, make sure it's less than 220 uh, millimeters. Oh, wait. That one's not even SFXL. No, I'd rather go SFXL if I can. I like this. Oh, wow. One egg. Oh, Ooh. man. What is that? Uh, it's a be quiet unit. I'm surprised. Hmm. All right, what is there for SFXL? Ah, there's a Seasonic Focus. And there's a Silverstone 800 watt. You know what? Screw it. I'm going with the Seasonic Focus. It has no reviews, but Seasonic has yet to lead me too far astray. Yeah, it might not be the greatest. I know they've had some issues with their Focus line. Um, yeah, I think Ripple is a problem right now. SGX 500. Um, 100, but I need so little from it. I, I like, I'm not overclocking. I guess I am gonna be pushing it pretty close to its limit. Is this a relatively new one or what? Full mod, ooh, it's fully modular too though. 10 year warranty, you know what? Screw it, I'm doing it, I'm going for it. I don't even care anymore. All right, so I got my case, got my power supply, got my graphics card. All right, keyboard. So I'm not even looking for a deal on a keyboard here, guys. I'm just gonna show you the one that I use because I absolutely love it. It's from this weird, tiny company called Sudeco. I have never found anything quite like it. Oh yeah, it's not gonna be a Black Friday deal. 
I don't even know if Newegg's gonna carry this. Mm, nope. All right, I'll try Amazon. For my cooler, I think I'm gonna go with, um, there's a couple of deals for Be Quiet. Yeah. Uh, not great deals, but they are a little bit off. Um, so the Dark Rock Slim here is 52.90, which is regular 60. Uh, looks like it'll be perfectly fine. And the reason I don't wanna go with one of the many Hyper 212 Evos that are on sale is I hate the mounting mechanism for the Hyper 212 Evo. Hater. <laughs> Literally a hater. Yeah, I will spend more <laughs> to avoid that. <laughs> it is the, that once scissor you, mechanism. Once you've done it a couple times, it's not that bad. Yeah, it's not that bad. It's terrible the first time. Yeah, it, it's a piece of garbage. Like, like no doubt, no doubt. Um, so, oh, this is interesting. What? Is this a brand? Pony Bro? Whoa. You have got <laughs> to be kidding me. Pony Bro mini wireless keyboard with touchpad. So these little touchpad ones are okay, but I find the touchpad a little tedious to use. What I like about this Sudeiko one, which right now is only available from one weird random reseller. Um, so what I'm kind of hoping is I'm gonna open up the product page here and it's gonna tell me about some other options is it's actually got a gyro mouse in it. So you just kind of go like this, and then the, the shoulders are a left and a right click. I have like three of them just in reserve in case the ones that I have die and they stop making them because I absolutely love this thing. It takes forever to type, but it's a lot faster than trying to use an Xbox controller or like you know grabbing a big keyboard out and putting it on your lap. Um, so I, I love this thing personally. I don't see anything that comparable. Oh no, those are sponsored items. Hold on, what else we got? And like, yeah, the reviews aren't great and I've had a couple of them die, but I just, from what I've seen, it's utterly unique and I really like it. Um, also viewed, what do we got? Yeah, more with trackpads. Like I'm really not into the trackpad. People are saying, why don't you use the stock cooler if you're not overclocking? Does the 3800X come with plugs? Uh, I should, yep. That's why I had a question mark in here, guys. I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet. I just put this in because I wasn't sure what kind of CPU I was gonna end up with. And when I put it in, I had um, an Intel K-series. And actually, that's another pricing advantage that I didn't even consider when I was deciding between the, uh, what was it, 9700K and the 3800X? Yep. So good call, guys. Yeah, we can drop the cooler. For me, I could drop the cooler for the 2700 since that also comes with one. But I would like something a little bit quieter. And I feel like the tower cooler that the Be Quiet offers um, will give me a little bit better of a uh, uh, acoustic profile. I want to buy the Pony Bro one just because it's a Pony Bro keyboard. They missed out on the Brony name. <laughs> well, no, I think that's probably why they did. Mind you, you can't like trademark Brony anyway. Can uh, you trademark Pony Bro? I don't know. You can trademark anything. Pony bro. <laughs> Unreal. Um, so because my keyboard is also a mouse, I am just going to use it as my mouse. Also, I think it's going to cost me so much in shipping that I might as well just throw 30 instead of 20 in there. I don't really need any networking stuff. Um, I'm just going to be using the onboard Ethernet, but I do need some cooling fans. You know what's kind of crazy? It has been so many years since I have just like shopped for a decent value, like decent fan, mm -hmm. that I have like Yate Loons were the shiz. The last time I was like, yeah, like what's a decent, you know, $4, $6 fan? Um, and like for our show, for like our showpiece builds, obviously we're gonna use fans with RGB up the butt and you know, all that, you know, magnetic levitation bearings, like, you know, fans that are literally $40, $50 each. But if I'm just building a, a, an HTPC to just like chuck in a corner somewhere, um, yeah, there's not much point. Now, with that said, I don't actually have to buy that many fans. I only need like probably two for the case would be enough airflow to take care of this machine. So, I don't know. I'm just gonna, can I just play it safe and just buy Noctua fans? They're probably not on promo at all. Noctua uh, probably not, no. Discount they don't even, <gasps> they don't ever need to. They are! What? Amazon has just the NFS12B Reduxes uh, for five bucks off. Mind you, if, any, if our experience uh, for the rest of today is anything to go by, that's probably not even a deal. <laughs> Still, uh, you know what, Poor I'm gonna Amazon. go with the P12. 
I'm not a huge fan of the F series of Noctua fans just because as soon as you put any restriction against them, like even a freaking air filter, they, they're basically useless. Um, I, I'm a, a much bigger fan of the P series and F series. So I'm just gonna go with a couple of P series Redux fans. Um, I'm gonna make sure that they're not cheaper over on Newegg before I do that. Network interface and, cards. And, huh, P12 Redux, 25 bucks. Oh, okay, here it is for 1390 over on Newegg and Amazon. Is this up Prime? Oh, it's hard to tell because I'm on .com and I'm shopping in Canada. You know what? I'm buying everything else on Newegg so far, mm -hmm. and the price is identical, $13.90. <clears throat> so I guess I'm just going to do that two times, NFP12 Redux. So the difference between the Redux fans and the regular ones is that they're the gray and darker gray color scheme. I don't think they don't come with as many accessories. Uh, I don't know if they have the anti- don't, they don't have the anti-vibration mounts and stuff, so they're like not as fancy. Um, but they are fundamentally the same Noctua bearing and the same plastics and the same design and the same quality of plastics. I don't think they actually are necessarily the same plastics. Don't quote me on that. So that's going to be $28. Um, oh, apparently um, that's only the 1300 RPM one. And the Amazon one is 7, Ooh, did I miss that detail? Uh, you know what? That's fine because I was going to be turning them way down anyway because remember guys, again, it's all about what you're building for. Uh, this is an HTPC. So I'm going to go with the 1300 RPM and I will probably end up undervolting that a little bit. Um, so are you absolutely sure you don't need any, any networking gear at all? I'm pretty sure. What's up? I found a Rosewill 10 gigabit NIC for $17.99, but it is 30% off with a promo code. So like $50 for 10 gig. $50 for 10 gig? Here's my question for you. No offense to Newegg, Heart Newegg, would you buy a Rosewill 10 gig card? Or by the time you're going 10 gig, would you just buy one from, um, ah, shoot, who were the guys that um, provided them for the land center, Jake? Which one? Uh, the, the 10 gig Knicks. Quantia. Yeah, Quantia. Yeah. yeah, wouldn't you just buy directly from a Quantia at that point? Or like but an how Asus? Many, how many people are making One, 10 gig chipsets right now? It's probably in a Quantia chipset. I yeah, just mean like, like, wouldn't you just buy a reference card? I think that's in a Quantia chipset. It, it's got to be in a Quantia chipset. Who else would exactly. Who else would it be? There's a couple companies that have them now. But is it a reference card? It looks pretty similar. Okay, here, tell you what. Here, I'm going to bring up, I'll bring up a reference card. Let's just see. It's like the same price. It's got to be the same. And they advertise it as a five-speed one, same as the... Oh, go away. Yeah, please enter this captcha to enter our website. You got it I'm wrong. I'm just shopping. You look like a robot. Wait, why am I on .ca? Ah, go away. Quantia. Okay, uh, I'm going to check out uh, Newegg here. Uh, here we go. So here's one for, oh, I don't know who LR Link is either. It's 4 p.m. by the way. It's 4 p.m.? Yeah. Oh, wow. How long have we been streaming for? Uh, hour and seven minutes. Oh, okay. Are people interested in it? I don't even know. I don't even have like, uh, I don't even have there's like 20, the- There's 20,000 people watching. There's 20,000 people watching right now? On YouTube. Sup? 1,000 on Twitch. Sup, G's? I'm the demand so far. Okay. So it's going to cost you $97 to get an Asus one. Right. Um, I can't, oh right, I was just looking up a picture, that's why I want it. Quantia 10 gigabit. Everybody's been waving emojis in here. Um, okay, so can I just see like, no, it is not a reference card. Mm -hmm. So that's a relatively small. That has a tiny cooler on it. Yeah. And does that say if it's using an Quantia chipset or are there it some like say anything rando chipset. chipsets out now? You know what? No, why? Like, just why? Like, if you're going 10 gig, buy proper Cat 6A cabling, get a card that you know is gonna be fine. Like, I would just get one from a brand that I know, at least if something goes wrong with it, that I can yell at them. Um, <laughs> why are there fiber channel adapters here? In the Black Friday sale? Yes. I don't know, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> just, 
just ignore all the fiber channel adapters, okay, guys? All right. So, how close are you on your build? I'm most of the way there. Okay. I've got, uh, I'm missing a GPU, but I'm probably not going to hang anything fancy off of it. Well, hold on a second. So, Plex, oh, funny story. I was using a super old Plex Docker container that was like mm -hmm. a third party one, and uh, I, it hadn't been updated in like two years because oh it wasn't being yeah, it maintained. So it tells me, but when I would click it, it the notification would just like go away. And I was like, okay, I guess I updated. And it would go away for a while. And then I would see the notification again. I'd be like, okay. And I, I never actually checked the version numbers. And it kept working with the latest version of the app. But um, anyway, long story short, I added a GPU to my server and I couldn't get <laughs> GPU encoding working. And it was because the version of Plex server that I was running was so old that GPU encoding wasn't supported. Um, but the reason for this story, anyway, I'm running the, I'm running the official container now, everyone just chill. Um, so the reason I'm telling this story though is that Plex does support GPU encoding. Okay. Um, so you might want to consider, it doesn't have to be anything crazy, but even something like a GTX 1650, is super. it the super that includes the new NVENC yeah. engine? Yeah. If you threw something like that in there, it might not be a bad bet. Do they have any of these on the sale though? With that said, what CPU you're running? 2700. Oh, that's already good enough to encode for. That's like how I was many streams? Thinking. Like maybe two. Yeah, right? no, you're good. You're yeah. good. Okay, so do you want to walk us through your build then? All right, so I've got the Ryzen 7 2700. It's okay. uh, not a super fast per thread CPU, but it's got a lot of threads, so I can split it up however I need to. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> motherboard's a little bit higher end than I wanted to go. Uh, there aren't that many B450 boards that are decent and do oh. what I need to do. And on, on sale. Yeah, on, on sale as far as I'm... Yeah, that's what that's what I mean. There's, there are be decent B450 boards. Um, <clears throat> 32 gigs of DDR4 3600. That is mm -hmm. overkill, but it is 32 cheap. gigs. Yeah, but you're running VMs. I don't yeah. even think that is overkill. I think that's well, no, no, totally no. reasonable. 3600 is overkill for the 2700. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, but it won't hurt. No, it won't hurt, and it's cheap. Sure. So why not? Um, GPU TBD might get a USB dongle. Kay. It doesn't really matter. I might run it headless. And you ended up with the Be Quiet Dark Rock Slim? <clears throat> Dark Rock Slim for the cooler. Uh, for storage, I've got for the main SSD, uh, WD Blue, 3D NAND, oh. uh, 250 gig. Uh, did you decide on an OS? Um, I didn't yet. I could okay. throw in like $50 for, it's like $50 for the license. Well, if you're running Unraid, you don't need that store, uh, that uh, boot SSD. Right, that's true. So that's one of the justifications that those guys give is like, <clears throat> yeah, we know our software is Linux based and it costs like, I, I don't remember, it's 50 or $60 for a pro. I mean, double check before I make an idiot out of myself. But you can you run 60. it off of a USB drive. 60 for basic. That's yeah. with six attached storage devices. Yeah. Um, so, so by doing it myself, I could save 20 bucks. Yeah. And but, you'd have faster storage. Yes. Uh, and more reliable storage. Because the thing about USB sticks is we've run into this with Unraid before. Sometimes they just fail. I've had so many <laughs> USB sticks fail in my pocket. The yeah. next time I plug them in, they don't work. Yeah. What else um, you got? Crucial one terabyte NVMe SSD for, for caching. Okay. Um, Seagate six terabyte Iron Wolf times two. Okay. Uh, they're on sale, pretty decent price. Uh, speaking of which, the price for the one terabyte Crucial is not the actual price. That's the displayed price because they needed me to contact them. <laughs> um, so I just put it in as the regular price. Should we uh, find out what it actually is? Get them to send the email after when I'm going through mine or something. Okay. Uh, can, the case is the Fantex P400. It's got six um, internal drive bays for three and a half inch and two for two and a half inch. So it should be good for a NAS for the foreseeable future. It's also cool. okay. relatively decent looking. Uh, and for the power supply, I've got the FSP Hydro PTM 650 watt, which is a uh, 80 plus platinum power supply and rated one of the higher ones on our PSU tier list on the forums. Um, it's a little bit overkill again, but I want some room to grow if I decide to throw a GPU in it for say a virtualized session or uh, if I want to throw in a lot more hard drives. Cool. All right, and what's your what's your what's your total then? Total is uh, just over a thousand bucks U.S. And that's for only you know eight terabytes of storage, but with a ton of expandability in the future. So that could easily scale up if you were to run something like a RAID Z1, which I think is pretty reasonable for six drives. Yeah. Um, so that could easily scale to oh, well, you'd have to you know if you were running RAID Z1, you would have to move all your data, put in the new drives set up your RAID Z1, copy all the data back, but right. at any rate, it's like 56 terabytes of storage. Um, not too shabby. I mean, that'll hold a lot of uh, 
um, Blu-ray backups, so to speak. Yes. Um, I'm gonna walk through my rig. So I ended up not going Ryzen second gen because I really wanted the per thread performance because I'm gaming. Uh, but I did end up going with an eight core processor because I want to at least have the option. Like, let's face it, NVENC is the way that I'm probably going to do my streaming. But if a driver update borks it, or if AMD somehow manages to have like far and away the better graphics cards next generation or whatever, I see no reason why I shouldn't have a CPU that's capable of running CPU encoding if I feel like it anyway. So I went with an eight core. Uh, it's a little bit overkill, but it's also not totally unreasonable at $330 plus. If I recall correctly, didn't it include a couple games? Uh, yeah, Oops, it came with, the uh, what was it, the, um, oh, what was it, the Outer, Outer Lands, Outer Worlds? Outer Worlds, Outer Worlds that's yeah. right. Um, hold on, I ended up finding that on Newegg, I think. You have to oh, yeah, 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 I will. Uh, sorry, I just have to fix my link to this one. So it comes with Borderlands 3 and the Outer Worlds, only one of which matters. Uh, okay, cool. Hmm. <laughs> you can sell it. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sell it to Jake. Jake's the only one here who likes it. Have one. So I'm using my stock cooler. That saves me like 25, 30 bucks. Um, for RAM, I went with the G Skill 3600 megahertz CL16 kit with RGB. Uh, wait, no, that one was not RGB. Right, yep. the 3200 was RGB. Yeah. 3600 megahertz, I went with an RTX 2070 Super. Okay, turns out it's not a great deal, but if I fill in my mail-in rebate, I get 30 bucks off and I get COD um, with Outer Worlds. I'm not even putting Borderlands in there. Um, <laughs> for my power supply, <laughs> just trolling you guys at this point. I went with uh, an SFX L power supply because this is um, an HTPC. It's gonna be in my living room and having fans running is super annoying. So I went with an SGX, so I went with an SFXL so I could get a 120 millimeter fan. Um, it wouldn't have been a terrible bet for me to go with, I think it was a 600 or 650 watt unit for around the same price that was SFX, but that would have been louder, especially when it was under load. So uh, I, I took a chance on this one. This was a Seasonic unit, if I recall correctly. Yes. For my storage, I went with Intel 660p one terabyte. Um, I think the drive that Anthony chose is not QLC. I think that's a TLC. It's a TLC. Yeah. That's, so yeah. his is a better bet for something that's actually uh, going to be used as a cache. In fact, even that I'd say is like, huh, borderline, but he would definitely not want to use this Intel one. This is a no. QLC SSD. But for me, it doesn't matter because I'm just going to be throwing my game library on it, which is just my VR games. Like I don't actually sit on the couch with a keyboard and mouse very often at all. So like I'll have like Overcooked on there and stuff like that, like controller games. But a terabyte is enough for my for my living room game library. So for me, it's fine because I will very rarely be actually writing to this drive. I can save my seventeen dollars, but with him, I wouldn't do that. I mean, it's it's, cor it's horses for courses, right? So uh, that's one of the reasons that I thought it might be cool for us to do like really different builds today. Um, I went with the Sedeco Air keyboard for my keyboard and mouse. I went with um, a couple of Redux cooling fans. My total for my system is about $1,400. So I did spend more than you, but most of that is my graphics card. Yes. So actually the majority of my build, because I went ITX, um, I didn't need a bunch of storage, is actually a little bit less than yours. Mm -hmm. Now, the one thing that I haven't factored in yet that makes my uh, shopping cart a little more expensive than yours is uh, <clears throat> to the tune of about $5,090 is the 77 inch C9 OLED G-Sync capable TV that, uh, oh, you know what I didn't think of? If I'm actually gonna be gaming at 4K on that thing, I basically need to go 2080 Ti. If so you to do 4K. that's a variant of this. So if I'm just watching movies on, on that, if that's all I care about, or I'm just, I just want G-Sync for like overcooked or whatever, this is fine. But if you guys legitimately wanted to game at 4K in your living room on that TV, you're gonna wanna step up your power supply. Uh, I would probably just jump right up to that 800 watt unit from um, Silverstone. You could probably get away with Corsair 600 watt. And then I'd go 2080 or even 2080 Ti. Alternatively, if you're not that yeah. big into 4K, 4K, but you just wanna get rid of the mm -hmm. um, display scaling, you can use integer scaling in the NVIDIA control panel now. That's true. To use 1080p at 4K resolution. And I actually tried, it wasn't on the 77 inch model, it was on the 65. Um, I tried running it at 1440p 120 hertz, surprisingly good experience. Yeah. 
So that's another option as well, guys. And then you're still, you're not quite getting the most out of your TV, but given that we don't have HDMI 2.1 graphics cards yet anyway, even a 2080 Ti isn't actually able to run it at 4K 120 Hertz. It's gonna be 4K or 120 Hertz. Mm -hmm. um, although the, the TV is like super future-proof uh, because it'll do 4K 120 Hertz once we do have HDMI yeah. 2.1 graphics cards. So maybe the only thing you need to do for now then is throw in the beefier power supply um, and then you can upgrade the graphics card later once you have something that'll run 4K 120 Hertz anyway. I mean, that's an option. Okay, so would you, uh, did you end up finding how, how much that thing costs? You forgot. I blanked on it. <laughs> I, was, I was paying attention to what you were talking about. <laughs> that's uh, okay, that's okay. I, also, just yeah. to be clear, you're, you're cooler, you're going with the stock cooler on this, right? I did go with the stock cooler. It's not that loud. It's not that loud. That is something else that you could do to step this up a little bit again, is put in a bit of a nicer cooler. Um, and it doesn't even have to be anything amazing, just something with a 120 millimeter fan it might get a little bit quieter. Yeah, I didn't need the cooler here, but again, I wanted something a little bit quieter since uh, my apartment's kind of small. Right. So why don't you find out how much that bloody SSD costs while I tell you guys, hey, the stream is brought to you by iFixit. iFixit's got all your favorite tools on sale this week for Black Friday. You know, the blue and black tools you've been waiting for an excuse to buy. So get the ProTech Toolkit, whether it's for yourself or whether it's for a friend that you want to inspire to learn how to repair their own electronics or whatever the case may be. Um, I forget how I started that sentence. It doesn't matter. So they've got the ProTech Toolkit. They've got their project mat. They've got all their other tools. I mean, they have so many different options at ifixit.com. And as always, they've got a lifetime warranty. So guys, visit ifixit.com slash Linus and use code BLUEANDBLACK19. Got it right that time. Jake's on his phone. He's not even paying attention. Blue and Black 19 to get free domestic shipping until December the 1st, 2019. Okay, how much is it? Okay, it's $99 retail. And they emailed you the price? Yes. Okay, $4 off? $4 off. For real, that's, that's I waited. All, all that. All these thousands of people sat through my sponsor spiel for iFixit for a $4 discount on a Crucial SSD. $4 is $4, you can go out and get yourself a candy bar and a drink or something. Candy bar and a drink. Or you can head to LTTstore.com where we also have a Black Friday pr promotion. Uh, LTTstore.com is like, we don't have a ton of like plugins for our Shopify yet and stuff. So, you know, whatever. It's, there's some things that are not great about the way the promo works this year. We'll try and do better next year. Anyway, we have two different promos, only one of which can be applied at a time. You can grab three pairs of underwear, throw them in your cart, and it's buy two, get one free. That'll automatically apply a discount. And separate from that, if you spend over $100, uh, you can use code, oh crap, do you remember the code, Jake? That's a weird uh, code. Uh, BF SHIP, all caps. BF SHIP, all caps, to get free shipping on orders over $100, up to $30. As I said before, guys, I'm so sorry, but if your shipping is more than $30, there is no $30 discount. I am so sorry, but there's just, we, we don't have a mechanism for that. And $30 is already at the point we're on a $100 order, we're just like, well, hey, we made this stuff and here you go, now it's yours, but we're not, like, we're not making money on that. So uh, Black Friday, guys, have fun. And I guess that's pretty much it. So thanks for tuning in to the stream and uh, we'll be back very shortly with the WAN show, I guess. Did you want to do Super Chats? Oh, right, Super Chats. Uh, yes, we should do some Super Chats. Um, oh, crap, I don't even know if, because I, I wasn't logged into the thing. Oh, boy. Uh, YouTube Studio. Uh oh, um, where's the stupid live, them out to you. stupid thing? You can what? Sorry. I can read them out to you. No, if you read them out, then I have to read them again because <laughs> they can't hear you that well. Like it's just terrible. What's a good way for us to do this? I'm not showing your screen, so you could just log in or look on your phone. Maybe? I, I am logging in, but I don't know. I don't know how to just. Oh my goodness. You gotta go to the live dashboard. Yeah, but where's the new live dashboard? Yeah, but if I go to the old one, is it gonna change the name? Because we had that happen on the WAN show last week. It was super stupid. I was so mad. It changed the name of the stream midstream because I had the audacity to open up the other live dashboard because the like new one is dumb. So mad. So mad. Uh, all right, well, I will, I will go there and we will see what happens and I will try to respond to super chats for you wonderful people. Uh, are they here? 
Uh, let's see. I, I see one. I also see a question directly under it. Why is my Mac pink? Because dbrand. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, dbrand. dbrand.com slash whatever our vanity URL is. Go check it out. All right, so what do we got here? What the heck is this kid doing? Vlog slash comedy. 99 cent, uh, 99 cent super, uh, no idea what you're talking about. What? Thanks, Cat Addict. Thanks, Agent Baby. Thanks, Vivex Hash. Thanks, OMG Major Ranger. Can you guys use Canadian prices slash suppliers this year? No, I can't. Sorry, um, because most of our viewers are in America. Hugo, um, I'm great. Thank you for asking. Uh, how are you? Uh, Robin says, where can I get the CAD drawings for the Minecraft server? Were we planning to release those? We can. We can. They're, they're imperfect. Yeah. Um, it's, a, it's a big U <laughs> with the front and the back. Yeah, I mean, yeah, sure. I mean, sure. Why don't we just, can Message we throw them up? Me on the forum. Message Jake on the forum. Oh, you're going to get so many messages, dude. Whatever, okay, message Jake on the forum, apparently. Thanks, Raphael. Thanks, Jack. Thanks, Jeff Wickersheim. Uh, thanks, Henry Wallace. Uh, thanks, David Cook. Um, thanks, the Minister of Memes. Um, thanks, Rocket Labs. Thanks, Daniel C. Cicero. Ronnie Bickers Jr. is asking, PCI Express 4.0 make a difference running the OS? Not really. It uh, it will, but Eventually. not in a way that you're likely to notice. Yeah, um, it's it's like uh, they, they the, very the edgy edge cases. And a lot of the time, it's more to do more to do with architectural improvements to the controller and the NAND, and less to do with that it happens to be PCI Express Gen Four. It's just that at some point, PCI Express Gen Four ones will be faster, but not because they are PCI Express Gen Four necessarily, but because all the, all the better ones you'll be able to buy that are newer and faster will be PCI Express Gen 4 because why would you make a newer, faster, better one that's PCI Express, that's last gen? Yeah, you don't see 2.0 SSDs anymore, despite the fact that you could make them. Yeah. Um, yes, Robert, Mail, this is not the WAN show, but it will be soon. Um, thanks, Michael. I did end up finding that 3800X for 330 bucks. Um, Jared says, Jared Walls, wait, this isn't the Linus Sebastian roast? What are you people talking about? Uh, officially next to uh, recommended an ASRock board. I believe that's an MATX board though, so I, we didn't go that route. Um, the thanks. Creator 98 says, Anthony's CPU doesn't have integrated graphics. I know, I don't care. I'm just gonna throw like a USB one on there or something. Um, uh, thanks Ilya Tarasov. Um, thanks Kerry Gunn. Oh, whew. Kerry Gunn asks, Advice on capture cards other than Elgato for the Switch. Oh, we actually had some uh, capture card yeah. issues before this stream. Black Magic stuff. Um, Jake yeah. recommends Black Magic stuff. My experience with them over the years it hasn't been perfect. Hasn't been perfect. The new stuff is really good. Apparently the new stuff is really good. So there you go. The PCIe Mini Recorder 4K if you have a PCIe slot. Thanks, Mike McCarty. Sure. Thanks, Mitchell Skrinnick. Um, thanks, Enotech. Thanks, Noah Dorfler who has a two terabyte hard drive with one terabyte SSD. How difficult is it to swap a hard drive for another SSD? As difficult as putting it in and then copying all the data over, generally speaking. Uh, thanks, Jake Sully. Um, thanks, Mike McCarty. Thanks, Swayze. Stuff it, Linus. I'll be a fanboy if I want. <laughs> well, that's your loss. Um, thanks, Mega Buster. Thanks, Mikaeus Kimiz. <laughs> oh, big shocker, Linus doesn't know lower end boards. <laughs> Still waiting on 3200G, 3400G Ryzen review. Okay, we're gonna do something with it, don't worry. Uh, Ray says, pick this up on Amazon for 3D design, Ryzen 5 3600, 16 gigs RAM, RX 580. I probably would have gone NVIDIA for 3D design depending on which software you're using. We did uh, cover that in our like SolidWorks guide. Um, other than that, looks great. And, and I think that was quite a while ago. I don't know if we tested the RX 580. Uh, Aiden says, is the Rift S for 350 bucks good? Yeah, honestly, um, it's not great. It's 80 Hertz, but it's good. It's comfortable. Um, the Oculus stores like not open, which kind of blows, but I mean, the Vive is still shockingly expensive and I wouldn't go Windows Mixed Reality from my experience with them. I've had people tell me that they've gotten better, but like, I don't know. I can only comment on my experience. So there you go. Uh, thanks Twisted Clowns. Um, it says more Linux content. I'm sure we'll do more Linux content at some point. Um, can a 3770 and RX 480 stream at all? It won't be a great experience. 
Um, yeah, it won't be the best. Thanks, Nick C. Thanks, Wolf Teen. No, we're not doing an Intel Itanium build. Oh, my God. Thanks, Adam Jimenez. <laughs> Uh, had a good recommendation for a case, 44 bucks uh, with a $10 rebate via Newegg, Cooler Master 1. I can't verify if it'll actually work at this point because I'm going through these things. Uh, Matt says, Mr. Beast is in the chat for some what would you recommend for a budget speaker setup for gaming, less than $100? A pair of headphones. Mm. You're not going to get speakers that are worth owning for $100. I'm, I'm not trying to be an elitist snob like jackass, but that's just the truth. Um, you can get some great headphones on Mass Drop for less than $100 these days, and that's the route that I would go. Uh, get like some nice open back ones so that they don't have that like that claustrophobic sound to them. Uh, the Burnin' Beaver. Why don't you all use PC Part Picker? Um, we could, for the most part. The reason that we would use sites like Amazon and Newegg is because they're going to have a lot of the best support from manufacturers for these kinds of deals anyway. Um, yeah, we could go use PC Part Picker, but a lot of the time the savings you get using PC Part Picker is offset by the fact that you're paying shipping four times or six times or whatever. Yeah. So that's just been my experience when we've done it is the shipping has killed the deal. Um, Ereket2, exhausted high from a thin salesperson after Black Friday. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm so sorry. Trust me, my first day working retail was on Boxing Day. It was a grand opening sale for the NCIX Langley store on December the 26th. It was the stupidest thing I've ever witnessed. Um, Tommy Gunn says, do you have two German guys on your staff now? Um, Kron and Rathgeber sound very German to me. Hey, Matthias! He's German. Is he German? A Kron, yeah, you gotta be German. What about Mark, though? He's Ukrainian. Ukrainian, Ukrainian. all right. Um, Pella. So basically Russian at this point? Ooh. Awkward joke, yikes. Um, oh. And I think we're done here. Uh, sorry, guys, that's uh, all I got for Super Chats. Thanks for tuning in. See you again on the web show. <laughs>